Today, we will tackle about writing the research proposal. Most research projects starts with the proposal. You probably have to write one before you start a thesis or dissertation. A research proposal is designed to persuade someone that your project is worthwhile. For example, your supervisor or firming body. The development of the proposal can help reduce wasted effort and provide a more efficient problem-free study by encouraging the researcher to clarify the exact nature of the investigation. Also. The proposal can provide the basis for discussing the strengths and weaknesses of the proposed project, facilitate the identification of conceptual and theoretical errors, and help to point out weaknesses in selected designs and methods. Proposals are usually necessary for applying for outside funding or grants for research projects. The research proposal aims to reflect the relevance, context. Approach and feasibility of your project. The formats of research proposals varies between fields, but most proposals should contain at least elements, title page, abstract, table of contents, statement of the problem, literature review, research design, etc. The title page of your proposal should include the proposed title of your project, your name, supervisor's name, the institution, and department. You should also check with your department to see if there is specific requirement. The second section is your abstract. Abstract is traditionally used to summarize your research talk about the attend research question and the method that you talk, and then the result to impact your discussion. Probably in this case, you're discussing a proposed research you have and actually done yet. So in this case, the abstract is very short, about hundred words, and its statements highlight the issue that you are concerned with. And you are going to be discussing in these proposals. A table of contents is not always considered necessary, especially for brief proposals, but it is useful for presenting an overview of the organization of the proposal. An introduction is not always considered necessary, as it tends to duplicate information that follows. But an opening statement characterizing what is being proposed can help to introduce the subject to the reader. Some authors use introduction to outline the major components of the proposal. If included, it shall be brief and avoid unnecessary redundancy. The first section of the typical proposal. If there is not a separate problem section, also introduces the problem to be studied and provide a brief historical backgrounds for the problem where appropriate. If the problem warrants being divided into sub problems, they are identified at this point. This section should indicate the importance of the proposed study or why a solution is needed and identify anticipated benefits and their significance. Examples of common sources of such information in the field of library and information science are terminology, brief background, trends, statistics, biographical information, directory type information, and bibliographical design. A strong literature review can visit the reader that your project has solely foundation in existing knowledge or theory. It also shows that you are familiar with the field. In this section, you will explaining how your project will contribute conversation on your topic. Also, it helps to suggest the best approach to seeking a solution to the problem. The research design or methodology shall describe the overall approach and practical types you will take to answer your research question. Here are things you shall describe in the research design section. Research type, so as qualitative or quantitative, primary or secondary sources who or what will you actually study research methods tools and procedure what will you use practicalities any perceived obstacle in terms of time scale required returning to the outline of a typical research proposal the next section usually is devoted to a description of the proposed research almost always written for the specialist rather than the layperson it includes the following elements, goals and objectives, a few statements emphasizing the major purposes of the research method to be employed should suffice. Second hypothesis. 
This section also will include minor or secondary and alternative hypotheses if any have been developed. Third, assumption. This shall directly relate to the hypothesis and build the case for the hypothesis, not the methodology. Fourth, definition. The operational or working definition for key terms and terms that are used in a unique way logically follow the hypothesis and assumption. For example, an operational definition of library use may specify the external circulation to be measured by analyzing circulation records. Many researchers prefer to incorporate the hypothesis, assumptions, and definition in the problem section but may repeat them here. Fifth, methodology. The next large section in the typical proposal describes the research methodology. In brief, this is where the researcher describes how the study will be organized and the situation in which the hypothesis will be tested. The researcher also should provide details in this section and the techniques and tools that will be used to collect the data. Number 6. Treatment of the data. Next, the researcher shall describe how he or she proposes to analyze the data to be collected. This part of the proposal generally does not need to be very specific. Dummy tables may be provided at this point to illustrate how the data will be categorized and analyzed. It may be useful to describe relevant institutional resources that are available to support the proposed research project. Items in this section may be include computer facilities, library resources, and survey research personnel and facilities. A section describing personnel to be employed in the study may be necessary for grant proposals or for projects involving for a relatively large number of people. A personal section is rarely needed for individual research projects such as dissertation research. True funding agencies often require the submission of a resume for the principal investigator or IP. If a personal section is included, it shall be provided relevant background information about the research staff, emphasizing their qualification and which they can contribute to the project. The budget has two main functions. First, it estimates as realistically as possible the cost of completing the objectives of the proposed research. The reader will use the budget details to determine whether the proposed research is economically feasible and realistic. Second, the budget provides a means to monitor the project's financial activities over the life of the project. Budgets are more likely to be underestimated than overestimated because the research may not realize how much work is actually involved. In order to decrease the likelihood of underestimating the budget, it is advisable for the researcher to check the currentness of the figures at the last minute. It is also desirable to build in hedge against inflation or to increase the figures for subsequent years, multi-year proposed by a reasonable percentage. For example, an exploratory study typically requires a relatively greater amount of time for data analysis than does a more focused study where the researcher has a better defined notion of what he or she is examining. A typical budget will usually contain at least the following items. First, Salaries and wages. Personal costs are determined essentially by translating the time and staffing into appropriate salaries and wages. Usually included here are the fringe benefits, if paid, and the cost of any constructual services such as consultant's fee. Second, space. Itemized here are the costs, if any, of providing spaces for the project. For example, the rental of an office will be included here. Third, equipment. Equipment costs whether purchased or rented. Fourth, materials and supplies. Provided here are the costs for consumable materials and items such as miscellaneous office supplies. Fifth, travel expenses. 
Number six, support services, expenses related to the use of services and facilities such as computers and photocopiers. Seven, miscellaneous expenses, additional costs related to telephone service, purchase of books, postage, and so on. Eight, indirect costs, costs that are cannot directly be identified with a particular project such as library services, utilities, accounting, maintenance, secretarial support, and so on. Nine, budget summary. If the budget is relatively long, it may be advisable to provide a summary of the budget listing major items only. If the researcher does not want to be negative at this point, it is important to note in a few concise statements the limitation imposed by the research method, setting, and so on. In essence, the researcher is stating the research can and cannot do, he or she denigrating the value of the study. If the author wishes to provide the reader with additional information that is not crucial to the text, then he or she may wish to include one or more appendices. As Lady and Armored state, research demand that those who undertake it be able to think clearly without confusion. Therefore, it is important that the research proposal be a straightforward document that includes only the Information which contribute to an understanding of the problem and its proposed solution. The proposal should represent a high level of scholarship as evidenced by insight in the problem, imagination in the design of the study, adequate graphs of research and statistical tools, and display of a scientific attitude. Unfortunately, numerous features of a proposal may diminish its effectiveness. Such weaknesses are always to be avoided, but they are particularly crucial when applying for funding. Some of these deficiencies are obvious though still surprisingly common. In 2002, the National Institute of Child and Human Development, part of the National Institute of Health or NIH, listed the most common reasons for the rejection of research proposal. Although this list is no longer available on the NIH website, the information is still relevant to grant writing. The most common reason for rejection include lack of new or original ideas, diffuse, superficial, or unfocused research plan, lack of experience in the essential methodology, and uncertainty concerning the future direction of the research. A workshop document prepared by the University of Michigan Division of Research Development and Administration listed nine questions that the foundation is likely to ask when reviewing a proposal. First, is the proposal problem solving? Is the problem important? Is this appropriate foundation? Is the proposal innovative? Will the project become self-supporting? Can the proposing group do the work? Is the project demonstrative? How will the program be evaluated? Is the amount of money requested sufficient? Another key obtaining funding is identifying research areas that are considered timely. From time to time, inventories of needed research studies have been produced and may be of some assistance in the identification of topics likely to be seen as relatively high priorities by funding agencies. The proposal is as essential to successful research as the outline is to good writing. It represents what shall be the careful planning that precedes a well-conceived research study. The proposal should spell out, to a reasonable degree, the details of a proposed research project and serve as a guide to which the researcher may refer as he or she carries out the study. In terms of format, most research proposals are essentially the same. The elements generally include or the title page, abstract, literature review, hypothesis and assumption, definition, research design, data analysis, a budget if appropriate, anticipated result, limitation, and references. A timetable which can be quite useful in keeping the research project and Satchel may be appended or may be integrated throughout the text of the proposal. Thank you.